Right. Without further ado, we want to thank everybody on the call today. Well, as you know, this is Friday. My God, what a week, what a week, what a week, what a week. The young man is going to bless us today with some more knowledge. Have you guys been picking up a lot from, from these calls? Because I tell you what, last Friday, you know, we, tonight we start our convention. Tomorrow is a convention. He talked about it last week. It is something that you need to be in getting people on, involved with. Well, let me shut up and get our guest speaker. Without further ado, he hails from Southern California. He's one of the champions of ACM, was here before I got here. He was a trailblazer for me and so many others. He set the foundation right for us to follow and book big footsteps. And I tell you what, he's one of the leaders of the company and also one of the go-to for the founders. And I tell you what, we've all learned a lot from him, me included, and what a great mentor and, and person he is. He's also have touched people in the community as well as in health, wealth, and mentally. Without further ado, the great, the one and only Senior Vice President, Mr. Byron Nelson. Good morning. What did we talk about this morning other than the national? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, I actually called Jimmy to see if the call was on because I didn't, I didn't expect the call to take place because all I'm doing is lining people up, getting ready for the national. I would imagine everybody else is doing the same thing. Um, I can open it up for any Q and A for any questions because I mentally had, had not prepared for anything this morning. I literally have been working uh, day and night um, to get people on for tonight at five o'clock. <laughs> So is everybody else in the same place or space or? And okay. also tomorrow, sir. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, yeah definitely. I'm, I'm definitely in. I actually am working on a proposal for, uh, for the founders as we speak to actually do the next national and have it with only a uh, 1,500 people. When I went to my first national, there was probably about 1,500 people to a thousand people, a fifteen hundred to two thousand people at the first national. It sounds kind of crazy, um, and that was in nineteen ninety. I feel like I'm talking about like eighteen forty one, but no, it's in nineteen ninety. Uh, we started in ninety three, ninety five, and the nationals were not more. But what happens is, if and, and I, I love to, to hear, you know, the leaders' feedback from Mr. Thomas, obviously yours, but if they had a national that only held 2,000 people, and the only people that can come is the vice presidents um, from this national to the next national, the ones that hit ETL from this national to the next national, and anybody else that could come has to have a minimum of 100 points. or even 60 points. And then it was like, whatever leader sells it out or has the most production is able to have the most people in there for either breaking the most new ETLs or having a team that has the most people that have over a hundred points. And then everybody else can still go to the national, but they have to go uh, virtually. So, um, so in turn, everybody can still plug in because that still takes the burden off of the company of the supply and demand, only the serious people are going to actually be breaking brand new ETLs. And if you're breaking new ETLs, I mean, and you got three or four or five, six new people going, but you can't go because you don't have a hundred points. You would probably go and get a hundred points because it would be it would look really bad on you if you actually were a leader developing um, new leaders, and they hit ETL and you couldn't even go because you didn't have a hundred points or were not a regional vice president. And in that supply and demand, it takes the burden where you only have anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 people there that now the founders can actually get back to the intimacy of what has made this company so great in the first place and have a sellout event. And then in turn, be able to, you know, grow it from there, if that makes sense, you know, organically, because it was sell out, you know, ultimately you're going to have two or three or four or five leaders that would actually go into phase one and really have, and so it would only be brand new people that the, that the vice presidents brought to the table. That forces all the vice presidents to go into phase one. Um, 
all the leaders that are in the play that would have be able to have new people go are ETLs. So it's almost like, you know, an NBA championship game or, you know, an, an NFL championship game. The tickets are so expensive, but it still sells out, <laughs> you know, and nobody would want to miss that. I would let you love your guys, Mr. Thomas. I would love your, your take on that as well as Julian and any other feedback. I mean, because that's what it really has. To, that's where we are right now is creating the value for uh, people being in phase one. Like I would challenge each person on here. How many people do you have on the call at eight o'clock tonight? You know, I, I've been talking to my team consistently, many of them which are on here. And, you know, I've literally kicked everybody off my calls all week. If they don't have guests, it's like, I don't want to talk to them. It's like, I don't, I don't need a professional meeting goer to just get on my call. It's like, it's, or, or even to be trained. You know, as if you don't have new guests, you don't need to hear me present. It's not like you've never heard me present before. You see what I'm saying? And you actually take away and de-edify. It's almost like if Mr. Al Thomas did a home meeting for me and I only had like two people in the living room knowing who he is and he travels to come to, to do it. That's, so, that's such a de-edification to me, you know, and people, you know, to be able to get people on a Zoom and you have six people that are reps and maybe two guests. It's the same de-edification, if that makes sense, if you had somebody fly across the country. Um, it's also, you know, me and Mr. Al Thomas have been saying this quite frequently about getting on, and this has nothing to do with it because I can't see anybody. I, I'm actually at home because I have all of my locations filled with people. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, and, and normally I'm at my, at my office, as you guys know. So I can't see on my phone who's on the call, but me and Mr. Al Thomas have been screaming about people um, being online, right? Being on picture with their camera open. You know, what, why would we do a Zoom call if 67% of the people are going to be with their picture up? Why don't we just get a conference call? You know, it's, it's um, because it's like, if I'm actually going to sit down to do a one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Al Thomas, I want to see him. You know, I'm not going to be sitting up there with a paper bag on my head, <laughs> you know? So why wouldn't I give him the same respect of giving him 100% of my attention when I get on a Zoom call to know that I've given him this allocated time and space and respect to make sure my picture is on. It's not like most people don't know what time the call is. So what I've found is a lot of my leaders are starting to do that. They're starting to be very clear about making sure that their camera is on. But here's the other side of that. Now, when they start bringing on guests, because I have some people that are really having great success with inviting people to the Zoom call, they aren't instructing and leading their new people or prospects to say, hey, I'm going to get you on with the president of you know, in the United States or Canada or wherever. You know, I'm going to get you on with you know, President Barack Obama. Would you prep that person and tell them, I need you to be up to par and be presentable in a quiet place with good internet when I get Michelle Obama online with you? Or would you, how would you feel if you actually, if Michelle Obama got online with you and everybody, she, she took all the time to be able to give exclusive attention, make eye contact, a collision for success of a high value contact that you would want in your Rolodex for the rest of your life. Would you actually get on here and have your camera off? And would you invite your family to get on with their camera off? And people are not getting the reflection of what that does. And they're, they, my team is, they're getting it when they get on with me, but I don't know where the miscommunication is that a person would not duplicate that conversation with new prospects getting on a Zoom call so that I can have Mr. Al Thomas connect with Winston or connect with Dwayne or connect with Daryl or connect with Eileen. I, I don't understand that. It's, it's just, you know, I, I need Sam to talk to my person and make eye contact. It's bad enough we're in this COVID and we can't be around each other. We can't go to meetings or we don't necessarily, or we don't do home meetings or we can't go to a, a Starbucks as we used to. It's coming out, it's, it's, it's about to happen. 
but we don't get generally to be able to go and sit down and have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, at a Starbucks or somewhere. Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? Nod your head if this is making sense, right? I want to sit down one-on-one -on -one with a person, look them in their eye and let them know, you know, and so it's been a very interesting dynamic to understand. Now we're having great success. And I believe a lot of my people are just really now getting into really understanding the power of phase one because they're getting that if you are not in phase one, you will never talk to me. I don't need to see you ever again. It's not like you haven't been trained. There's enough in the arsenal. And I'm not trying to sound that in a mean, say it in a mean way or be an ass about it. It's just there's enough, you know, consistent trainings, which Al Thomas has gone way beyond. I know I've done it for years. There's more than enough access points to just get information. But the point of this information is just to find two or three people who are going to actually do something with it and grow it and have two or three more people on here and two or three more people on here and two or three more people on here. And so that it's, it's and, I, and I was, I, we've had some really good conversations over this last weekend. I, I said, I love, I mean, I love my squad. I have an amazing squad. But I had to tell them, it was like, moving forward, I need you guys to be clear to follow instructions so that you don't see my teeth and Kyron doesn't show up. Because I really want to support and see people win. And it's so much, and I, I guess all of this is reverting back to understanding the national and really the state of events for the climate of doing business and understanding just simple answers. What's the most powerful thing to be able to get your business on track? Phase one, but instead of us saying phase one, it doesn't matter if you're an SVP like Mr. Thomas, myself, or if you're an RVP or if you're an RD, nobody knows who you are in your title outside of your room, outside of this bubble. Nobody cares about what position you're in and you're fooling yourself to believe that that's gonna make you any money. So the only thing we know is when you really want to go to work and, and, and you find out how liberating it is. I mean, how really, for me even, and it's like, I, it, it, so I understand how life gets away and sometimes it takes a minute. You can get caught up in this bubble or you can get caught up in this space and the resistance is there. It's like, I know I'm, I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I know I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what I'm supposed to do. I, I just, I just, and something blocks you. I get it, right? Because whether you lack confidence, which a lot of people have, or whether you have fear or whether you're comfortable, I make enough money. <laughs> I've had more than enough success. I've been on the stage more than enough time. I've been in every category of recognition that, that, that they've ever created. I've hit every bar. So it's very easy for someone like me or Al, Mr. Thomas, to get into a comfort zone and not want to talk to people and not want to go out there and work the business. But then we're frauds if we do not get back out in phase one and do it. And I find it so liberating. I, 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 I peaked this young lady, right? My partner it was at a cancer center I met this other young lady. I had an amazing connection with her. That was in February. And I didn't, and I tell, and I teach that when you let a prospect sit out past two days, they're like food, it goes stale. Unless you're Mr. Al Thomas or Byron Nelson, because you know how to keep it. Because when you get to that point, what happens is uh, the story kicks in of the baseball player. And I think I've shared it once or twice. You know, the scout went out there and went looking at this baseball team and called back to the coach and said, oh my God, this, I mean, we need hitters. And it's like, but this guy, you know, he just struck everybody out and had almost a no hitter. I mean, he struck, everybody struck out except for one person. They got one foul ball, but this pitcher we need to bring back on the team. I mean, nobody was able to hit off this guy. And the coach went back and said, we've got five world championships could you please bring me back the guy who actually hit the foul ball? See, the person that knows how to get the championship, they know what to look for in a leader. Mr. Al Thomas can go out there and sponsor five people and take an SVP. You, but that's because he went out there and talked to 5,000 people to know what an SVP looks like before they, you know, actually develop into who they are.
you have to go through the numbers and fall in love with the process. And you, and the easiest way to do that is to find people that have a specific it factor, you know, and then mastering the conversations that we've talked about, it's really a matter of just having fun with the conversation. I love scaring people out of the business before they even think about doing the business. I'm very clear when I talk to a person now, whether it's, whether it's a referral or whether it's a phase one, look, let me tell you, it's like, you are so amazing. In fact, I mean, my, my greatest compliment all the time is your personality is way too big for this place. How did you get here? You just, you just have too big a personality. You know, learning how to peak is a, is a skill. It's not a talent. It's just learn. You know what the skill is? Learning how to compliment people in the most extraordinary way and being authentic in it. So when I meet a person like I did in this young lady who, whose personality, I said, was too big, every time I came back, she was just like, it was like, you got to see her face. It's like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> I got to, I got, I got. And there's, you have no idea how many people are saying that with where they work. You know, but because of how you're approaching them and what you're saying, you're getting caught up in a sales pitch versus a share pitch versus a bless pitch. So when I finally followed up, I won't, I'll spare you guys the details. And I got back on the phone with this young lady. She's just like, I mean, we end up having a euphoric conversation because, you know, when we finally connected, she said, you finally called. Right. And I was like, Yes, but I mean, I authentically, I said, I had to call because you are so extraordinary and you've been holding space. You've been holding rent in my head and you aren't paying. You haven't been paying me. You owe me because I've been thinking about you every time, like, you know, we come down here, we take care of this. My girl does this. We do this. I'm like, look, this is what I need from you. I need to know what your dream is. I need to know who you are. She said, what do you mean? I was like, what is it that you want out of life? She said, I want to get the hell out of this job. I want to own my own business. I want to do this. I have this. I, you could not have found a more right prospect to answer. I mean, it, I couldn't make this up. If, if, if you ask somebody what you're looking for, she had the playbook before you could even say it. And so when we're sitting there, I mean, literally, every one of you guys have seen my video, Legacy. So at the end, I mean, and you can tell a person that has, you know, that right thing. I said, I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm looking for somebody who's crazy. I ha I've had enough bad crazy, so I'm looking for good crazy. Um, I'm looking for someone who, who wants to bless people. I'm looking for somebody who's a rebel. I'm looking for somebody who's, who will go against the grain. I want somebody who has an extraordinary work ethic. You know? Yeah, exact, exactly, Sam. That's the best thing right there is to be able to compliment a person not so profusely that you're pouring on them and it comes off so ingenuine or they give a quick answer. But when you tell somebody, it's like, you know what, you owe me. You, you know, and you can say it in that monotone voice, you owe me. You might need to pull out your checkbook right now. Why? Because you're taking up rent in my head and you haven't paid me. And I was supposed to call you six months ago, six days ago, six weeks ago. It's an extraordinary starter kit to a conversation, right? And now they're feeling warm and fuzzy, like I mean something. That's all people want to know is that they mean that they have value, that they mean something to someone because they aren't appreciated. They aren't appreciated. That's why men go by, their, they're, they're married and they have wives and they drive by the house and go to the bar up the street. They're like, I'm not appreciated. It's like, it's just going to be a nag by the time I get home. That's why women go out and it's a girl's night all the time, or they don't want to come because it's like, I don't, I, I'm not appreciated. So it's how it's how it breaks up marriages and, and relationships it's because people don't feel appreciated it's why kids go rogue and get on drugs they don't feel appreciated it's why people don't stay at jobs anymore for 30 or 40 years they don't feel appreciated so it's really our business is about appreciating people and making them feel special more so than getting them onto a zoom call you know and that's the other thing it's like me doing my calls to go into this blitz mode for uh, the presentations this week and last week is like, if you haven't had an initial powerful enrollment conversation, which is just in here, listen to this, them being enrolled in you. So they need to be in love 
with who Jamar is, who Juanita is. They need to be in love with who Lillian is, who Queen is, who Al Randolph is, Natalie is. They, they, need to, they need to just be in love with that person to know that it's almost like a connection that's spiritual. You know, it, it, it's, it's amazing that you can live in Las Vegas or you can live in Los Angeles, you can live in New York. And I was listening to um, one of my mentors actually teach on this. And wherever you live, you have people all around you. You don't even speak to them. But as soon as you go to, let's say you're from New York or you're wherever you're from, and now right now, each one of us are in London. And one person is from Brooklyn and one person is from the Bronx. But as soon as you see a New York sweatshirt, it's like, oh, you from New York? Yo, 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 I'm from New York. You from New York? You from this book party in New York? Bronx? Oh, yeah. But if you guys are right there in New York, it's like, oh, I don't like people from Bronx. It's like a mental thing. You walk around people right there in your own backyard. Oh, you from 53rd? No, I'm from 77th. I'm, 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 in, I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> Mentally, you disconnect, right? But as soon as you get into foreign waters, law of familiarity kicks, kicks in and you're excited to see somebody from home. And then when you can trick your mind into doing that every day to just connect and bless people, you'd be like, oh, do you know a part? If you two met each other and you were both from New York or from wherever you're from, from Toronto, and you met somebody in, 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 in Colombia, you'd be like, hey, you know what? You, you from, you from the, you from the six, you, you you from you from Toronto? I'm from Toronto. You know, you'll say, let's, you know, what are you doing down here? I'm just doing X, Y, Z. Well, there's some live music playing. Let's all get together, the two of us, and let's meet here. You'll actually connect with somebody you would have never connected with at home, but now all of a sudden find reason to establish communication and reasons for connecting and hooking up. Why wouldn't you do that to just bless people right in your own backyard? Why do you have to wait until you're in a, into a foreign space or forced into a foreign space? I don't know if this is making sense to anybody. I'm, like I said, this was a God conversation. This is really off the cuff. I hope it's blessing somebody. Because for me, I'm in a reset. So as you guys know, when I am in my office as well as in my house, I'm redoing everything. So I'm painting, I'm cleaning, I'm decluttering, I'm doing everything, right? And so... In that being said, that being said, when I when I push green light, which I already have, then it's like I come out running, and I try my best. I hate that word try. I do my best to give people warning that are in my life that if you are not ready to pull the parachute and jump to have the most extraordinary experience in your life, I may not ever see you again. Not because I'm, I don't wanna see you and I don't love you. I'm just going to a place that I've never been before because I can't, I can't live life in a life of familiarity. I have to go to new heights. I have to go to new places. I gotta see new things. I, I can't play in the, in, the, in the safety zone of, of just, oh, where, where are we going? Oh, well, who are we gonna talk to? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm excited. And I get on a call and you have no new people on the call. <laughs> and I'm like, hold it. I just canceled all my time. And you think that it's, you, you don't believe that that affects my spirit to see you on a call every day with no new guests. And you don't believe that now that, you know, let's say hypothetically Sergio or Stephanie has two guests on there and I keep seeing Daryl and Bill every day on there with no guests, how that would just piss me off that it, 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 would, it would actually, it, it's a combination of pissing me off and at the same time, messing with my mind that I'm being ineffective because I want Daryl to succeed. I want Bill to succeed. Obviously this is a hypothetical situation. I want them to succeed and it's effect, It's almost like you have three kids that are in their freshman class and they failed for the past four years, but you have a new crop of new kids and you wanna tell them the, 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 the blessing of being able to make it to the sophomore, the junior and the senior year, 
but you got five, six people that were supposed to be in the sophomore, junior, senior year that have been there for the past six months, six years. Does anybody understand that conversation? It's like, and you're like, when are you going to graduate? Aren't you tired of being where you are? And I got to go through the same curriculum, but you've heard it a thousand times. Now I got to figure out how to make it exciting to the new people and still at the same time elevate and leverage the old people. And you're messing up my, you're messing up, you're, you're impacting and changing. You're, you don't know how much money you're taking out of my pocket and hurting a brand new person because I can't give an authentic conversation. So just get off of my call so I can actually ignite a new soul. I don't know if anybody's getting this conversation, but it's, I'm just being transparent. <laughs> I'm just being so transparent. Maybe a little bit too transparent. <laughs> you know, but it, it's one of those things where it's like you, you're conflicted, you know. You're excited and you're angry and, and the prospects, the, the new person's hearing this. They're like, he's, I, I, I feel it's fire, but is he angry? Is it, is he is a pissed off black man or is he an excited black man? Is this something I want to get into? Is, uh, is this is what I'm going to, is this how I'm going to end up if I am like, do you understand the power of residual income? And everybody's not in their head. Now you got five people that have failed freshman class that haven't even gotten past 10 points, 20 points, 30 points saying, yeah, yeah. You like, you like, you just want to take a rock and throw it at them. Like you don't even have 30 points. You know, it's like, and when you bring a brand new person on, imagine that you help them get 10 points. And let's say you had 10 people on this call and they're not in their head. And you're like, you're making me such a liar because now I, I want to train you, kick your behind. And I'm trying, does anybody understand this conversation? <laughs> so all I'm saying is do whatever you got to do to recreate your life. Because this is about you. This is about creating who you are. It really is a development course. It really is. I mean, it's, it's as much as we hear it and as cliche as it sounds, it is a self-development course with an incredible compensation plan. We get paid for becoming amazing, but you got to make a decision if you want to really want to, if you really want to be amazing. It, 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 you know, people are looking for the special sauce and the specials, the, the special verses. And well, what do you say to this person? What do you say to that person? And, you know, uh, where do you find people? And that's really just an excuse to hide behind being you. You're like an ostrich with your head in the sand. This business is nothing more than just loving on the human race and paying compliments, giving people attention. And they'll respond, I'll give you another example. I, I mean, since I'm on a roll, I'm gonna wrap up because this is not a long call. Um, I was, I was uh, getting a sandwich for my son and I went by the deli and I happened to know, as, I, as you guys know, as many of the leaders on here that are in phase one now, um, I make every place that I go my own. Meaning if I walk into a store, by the second time I go in there, I might as well own it because I'm going to know everybody that's in there, among, who's the owner, you know, <laughs> who works behind the, the cashier. And I'm going to be pretty much, you know, my own personal cheers wherever I go. I want law of familiarity. So I went in, I talked to this young lady. I said, hey, how you, do, how you doing? How you doing? We play all the time. And then she said, no, really, how you doing? I said, freaking amazing. So there's a guy about, you know, about my size, probably a little bit bigger than me, really, really cut. And then on his shirt, it said sculpted. And so he was walking out and it's almost like as if he saw a long lost cousin walking out the door when she asked me how I was doing. And I said, amazing. And it was really how I said it. It's how I really say it. It's how I really feel most of the time. I'm like, I'm freaking amazing. I am so awesome. And, you know, I said, and I, just, I said, sometimes it comes with awesome sauce. Sometimes it comes with amazing sauce. Today, it's just amazing sauce. It's just, I'm just amazing. And as he's walking out the door, he's just like, I, and he's, I, you could see him as he's like almost stumbling out the door. Like, that is such an uh, incredible answer. He's like, I love that answer. He said, I actually teach my staff that answer. And what was crazy is, well, it wasn't really crazy. I've heard that at least two times a day from somebody when I say amazing, because people are so not used to hearing somebody being amazing or awesome or unbelievable. They're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm doing good. It's a great day. I'm doing great. 
it's just and, and so we buy into this lie because that's just a, that's just people don't really believe that you're going to ask how they're doing and genuinely want to know how they're doing which is why being more interested than interesting is so important but you can actually and I, i'll tell you this happened while i was in the redwoods i walked by the guy i grabbed his, his shoulder i think i told this last week and he said how you doing i said amazing he said, I can feel it. I said, I know, I just touched you. I just infected you. You got it too. He said, I did. We ended up talking for the next two, three hours and praying in the parking lot. And he was the owner of the restaurant. I don't know why that's so difficult to learn as to how to just wake up with a dream on your heart and on your mind and just want to connect with amazing souls and share what you're up to to bless people. What do you do? I bless people. People that want a blessing, you know what they're gonna say? What's that? People that are just gonna think you're eccentric or not have any interest, like, oh, okay. That, that sounds oh, cool. But people, it's like, I want you to imagine that it's like your foot hurt and it's been hurting for the past you know, year but you're too busy to go see a podiatrist or you may not have insurance. But then you connect with somebody and they say, well, well, what do you do? It's like, I'm a podiatrist. You're a podiatrist? Oh my God, I've been meaning to find it, but my foot is in pain. Could I make it a point? Can I see, could you, could you just tell me what this is? You will start a conversation, you know why? Because the person looking for a podiatrist is gonna be like overwhelming conversation. You'd be amazed. One of my best friends is one of the best dentists in the city. One of the best. He's the first one to be able to do a specific, I won't even go into what he does, but he's, he's amazing. He is amazing. And we go out a lot. We haven't recently because we, we kind of, you know, time and space, but we, we have reconnected over a lot of different things. And what's, what's crazy is he said, you know, I didn't, he didn't have to tell me anything. When I was going out with him frequently, he was actually one of my first RDs, by the way. When we're going out frequently, you'd be amazed when people say, what do you do? He says, I'm a dentist. How many people say, ah, can you see my, ah, ah. He's like, well, open their mouth in public and say, could you tell me what's going on with this? He's like, dude, I'm in, I'm in a restaurant. I just said, I'm a dentist. <laughs> At least two or three times, they're like, ah. My point is, when you tell people unconsciously, that is in an unconscious competence, who you are, they're going, the right people are going to be, they were already looking for you. Another story, this all happened because I'm in phase one. Last one, I was at, a, I finished working out yesterday. Um, I took my best friend, one of my best friends, Dom, who you guys know is an executive on my team. And he's my trainer as well. And I said, let me treat you to a, a, a protein drink or when he would start talking about something about a, 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 um, a beet drink. When you drink beet juice and carrot juice where you can feel it molecularly, just it's so refreshing in your body. You can almost, it, you don't know if it's healing you, but you feel like it's just healing everything inside your body. He got me thinking about that through the whole workout. And so right afterwards, I was like, who want to give me a beet juice? You want to come? And I was like, I'm going to take you to it. So we go there and there's this, this lady is, you know, she starts, uh, she's walking in the, in the parking lot, hands full with open house signs. And this little Asian woman, older, and I'm like already at my car about to get in. And I turned around and I said, would you like some help? And she was like, huh? And I was like, and I came up, she said, I said, would you like some help? And she first said no, while she was saying no, all of these open house, like, fell out of her hands onto the ground and her hands were already full. So what was the community to do, which I would have done no matter what and go and pick them up and help them put them in her car. Now, as I went there and helped her put her in her car, she started talking about as if she said, so how long have you been working over there? She said, I think she believed, believed that I came from the juice place. And she was just like, I was like, I don't, I don't work over there. She said, well, would you work in the plaza? I said, no. She said, well, that's my brokerage firm over there. I've had a brokerage firm forever. I said, oh, okay. And she said, well, 
so what do you do? I, I said, well, or what, you know, I was like, I do nothing. I was like, I bless people. I was like, she said, what do you mean you do nothing? Same thing happened, by the way, when I went for the prepping of my colonoscopy. The doctor, he looked like he saw a Martian. He just could not understand a, a, a black man doing nothing. It's, it's like, I mean, it's this, you should have seen this little Asian doctor. He's just looking at me like, do you do nothing? I was like, well, I have residual income. You have residual, what is residual income? How do you do that? And it's like, what do you mean you have ventures and business? And I mean, he was almost just like, I went to school for like 20 years and I'm working here a day and night and you're telling me you do nothing and you just don't fit the mold. <laughs> and you're like, you know, it's always, and, I, and you guys are my family, so I can say this, and Al would definitely understand it and get it. It's really amazing how stunned people can be. Um, and I'm this again, transparency is always in my life of living stunned me when someone who doesn't look like me says, but you sound so intelligent. It's like they're shocked that a black man can actually enunciate his words and speak from a high frequency of intelligence. And I'm like, are you kidding? It's, it's like, it's almost like they want to say for a black person, you sound really intelligent. And trust me, when I was growing up, I heard it a lot. I was like, you know, if I didn't have slang, if I didn't have the ghetto on me, it's like, you know, I'm like, it's kind of, it's, but anyway. So I'm having this amazing conversation and she's, we started talking about residual income in the parking lot. And she's like, I need some of that in my life because I'm doing these open houses. I said, well, let's meet. We started talking, we, I'm shortening the conversation, obviously. We got into some other things to relate on. And she was just in awe that I actually went to support and help her and wanted to bless her with picking up her stuff and put it in the car. So she indulged me in a conversation and she bought herself into the conversation. She's just like, well, I do investments and I have this and I have that, but I need the residual income component. Because when she asked me, what do I do? I said, oh, I am a business, you know, broker for, you know, specifically energy, but there's other things in which I tap into. I also deal with residential. And so that's what has allowed me to actually tap into residual income. You're a broker for energy. What does that mean? That means that I actually help people that are, you know, small businesses or at home save money on their bills in their house on their gas, electricity. And I started, I got into this because I, me and my father bought our first piece of property at 15 and I bought a duplex. He's like, and I said, it made sense that if I could help my tenants save money on their bills, you know, and then I get 20% of their bill every time they pay it. That's residual income. That's real residual income because you got a real residual bill. And it just kept going. And when, what happens is you, you start to have fun with this instead of looking for who's going to get in, who's going to hang you out to dry. You got to get off of, and I'm going to leave you guys with three things because I did a training for another industry yesterday, which they paid me for. And I shared it with my team. Three things that are applicable to every industry across the board, but really applicable to our business. If you can master and fall in love with the skill set of discipline, patience, and emotional management, you'll get rich here at ACM. I don't get, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, the reason why we get angry is because we feel like we've let ourselves down or other people down that have not done what they needed to do. But what you got to realize in this business, when you are on the court, is you have no control over somebody else's desire to win. And when you start to get caught up because their mouth says one thing, but their actions say another, and their actions could be because they haven't bloomed yet, because they don't have the confidence yet, because they chose powerfully to never bloom and they just love being in the space of what our family actually provides. Whatever it is, your job as a gardener is not to get attached to one seed or flower in the garden. It's just to water them all and keep planting seeds so that your family can eat. If they choose not to develop their garden, then it's their choice to starve. But if you just keep watering and keep planting and keep watering and keep planting, then you're going to be able to feed people that can't feed themselves. But at least you won't go broke doing it. So that's where the EM or the emotional management comes from of detaching yourself. You know, you'll find out um, as a trader in investments or as a trader 
in Forex or as a trader in commodities or as a trader in options or as a trader in whatever you did, whatever your medium is, any, any master that has made seven figures will tell you once you break the system and you break the rules and you get emotional, you're going to burn out the account every time. <laughs> every time you're going to burn out the account. They're going to tell you, you can't have, that's why my son does so well in it. It's because he's become a, prof he's a professional gamer. He has no attachment to numbers and systems and highs and lows. He only knows how to complete the task in the mile and keep going until it's done. And it's the same thing here in this business. If you learn how to just complete the task in the mile of where you're going, one day at a time, one brick at a time, one customer at a time, one business partner at a time, not hoping that somebody gets in and not hoping somebody, you know, it's like I said last week, somebody, it's like somebody said, I'm going to quit. I'm like, I didn't know you started. I mean, I didn't even know that you existed on a business level. How are you going to tell me that you quit? You should have kept that to yourself. That's actually, you know, really, don't you have any pride? That's like self, I mean, that's just, you know, just call and say, I just got to say, I love you, you know, it's like, because, and, and I, I get it. People do call and from time to time and say that because they're like, well, I didn't want to let you down. And you let me down. You let yourself down. I'm already where I need to be. I didn't go to the gym for you. I don't go and pray and go to church for you. I don't get up and work out twice a day. I don't sit up here and drink gallons of water a day for you. I do that so that I can be someone for you. So I can be someone to you. So I can be the best version of me. I'm not worried about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm drinking this water, when I'm on my knees, I need salvation. <laughs> you know, my point is you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of somebody else. How are you worried about somebody else and how they feel, you know, and how you, if you're really concerned with how you show up, then show up different. Does that all, is this all making sense? So anyway, all I can tell you is tonight is going to be amazing. You guys have a whole day in front of you to get, I, as I tell my team, you know, make a decision. Make a decision. Now, I know you guys have heard that, but I'm saying, learn how to do this all through your life when you're pushing reset. I told them, if you are not, I'll tell you the, the space. So look at a barometer or look at a, a ruler from one to a hundred. There's a few people that live in 90 to a hundred. And there's a few people that live in one to 10. Now the one to 10 are the negative people and it's almost like a stench. There's not a lot of them, but they really move around a lot. <laughs> Cause you come across one rotten person, stinky person, you, you get what I'm saying. It's like, you may not talk to anybody and even get, again that day. You're just like, I'm done. And the amazing people, they fought to become that. That's why there's only a few at the other end. The greater majority of them are between 10 and 90. And that is, unfortunately, Death Valley. That is the valley of mediocrity. It is the easiest place to become a piker and just plant your flag because the law of familiarity is there. You know everybody that's there. You're talking to them. You're hanging out with them. None of them are going anywhere. They aren't driving. See, both of those spaces to be really negative you have to work to be a negative person. I don't care what happens in your life. I, some people have reason in the cause of the moment, but to stay there, you heard people say, how are you doing? Oh, shit, I'm in hell. Call them six months later, how are you doing? Oh, my life is hell. It's like, they just moved in with the devil. It's like, it's like what's going on? You always got drama? <laughs> like, my God. And then you have people on the other spectrum they're always amazing. They they get to that one place. They will have a bad day every now and then. This, me and Mr. Thomas and Mrs. Jasper, we'll have a bad day from time to time. But we get to that neighborhood and remember what it was like being there and we will jump back into our skin and go back to amazing. <laughs> because we see, we're like, oh my God, that was me. I remember that. I remember that locale. I remember that residence. I remember that address. I do not want to be there. Please take me back. Let me work harder to get where I need to go. And we do that, you know? And so I'm saying each one of you have that in you or you wouldn't be on this call. 
Uh, but you didn't have to make the leap because it's a lonely place. It's not a lot of people there. So many people don't want to leave the law of familiarity of mediocrity because it's a lonely drive. It's a lonely walk. But I promise you, the air is cleaner. The food is better. The people are friendlier. The support is greater. The access to life in a bottle is so gorgeous. I'm sitting here. Oh, what's today? Friday? I don't know. It's Friday. Sitting here, my mom's in the other room. I can't imagine if I was working a job, even on a Friday, even to spend five minutes. Folks, I think we lost him. But anyway, I just want to highlight what he just talked about. Number one, I love that when he's prospecting people. I do nothing. Wow, I like that. What do you mean you do nothing? I have residual income. For me, that was powerful. I wrote that down three times. I'm a business broker. Wow, another heavy hitter for me. And a lot of you, please, please, please get this. Get your emotions out of the business. Emotional management is a big thing for a lot of you on the call. I'm not here to point anybody out, but I'm just saying if you guys can get that. Don't get emotional. If you're up, the team go up, it goes down. Don't get emotional. Don't get emotional. Take it out. Please, please, please. 